but we still see um, cilia, right? So this time we do have simple cuboidal. Cilia and microvilli are present. No cartilage. But we do have smooth muscle. And again, it doesn't have a specific name. Pardon? You said okay. the respiratory epithelium was pseudostratified. So up here it's called the simple cuboidal respiratory epithelium. And I'm just reminding you that when I use the term respiratory epithelium, it's interchangeable with pseudostratified columnar. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, I would do it through your PowerPoints and seeing that, and then if I say which of the following on an exam is respiratory epithelium, say, so well, it said on the slide. So, what blood vessel rhymes with bronchial? Arterial. arterial. And what was the role, what was the functional significance of an arterial? Yeah. But it was the what major vessel involved in? blood pressure regulation because of its diameter, okay? Because the bronchial is the only airway structure to have smooth muscle but not cartilage, it also has a significant function of being the major airway involved in airway resistance. So it will constrict and it will dilate, we have lots of them. When a bronchus constricts because of the plates of cartilage, it can't constrict as much as a bronchial can. So someone who has asthma or COPD and they have constriction of the bronchioles plus the addition of additional inflammatory mucus secretions, the bronchioles are the ones that are primarily affected, okay? And having the radius, remember the effect of decreasing the radius increases the uh, peripheral resistance by a far greater number. So, um, it, on Tuesday, we'll be talking about airflow and the same three factors that affected peripheral resistance in blood affect peripheral resistance in the airway. Diameter, length, and viscosity. You can't change the viscosity of the air too much. I mean, you go down to Southern California on a very smoggy day, it may feel like you're breathing soup, okay? We can't change the length of the airways too much unless we're adding a ventilating tube. But the radius is more readily affected. All right, so is this yet a conducting surface? Do we have any simple squamous epithelia yet? No. no. Now, notice this small little piece right here. Here's an alveolus blending out of the edge. So if I were to add that to my cross section, I would lose, I would change from simple cuboidal epithelium I would interrupt <coughs> my smooth muscle, and I would have simple squamous epithelium without smooth muscle, and this would be considered an alveolus. Now, this is not just a bronchial, but it is a respiratory bronchial. This is the first part of my respiratory zone. When I have a bronchial that also has an alveolus, all right? So I'm going to draw it longitudinally over here in just a moment. Because it's rather uncommon, even though I have a slide tucked under my desk from lab this morning that a student found that has a respiratory bronchial in it. Um, but it's much easier to see as a longitudinal section. So if all you saw was what I had diagrammed up there previously, 
bronchial is all you can identify it in. Okay, because it, all you have is the absence of cartilage and the simple cuboidal epithelial structures. So, in a longitudinal section of the airway, we would have simple cuboidal epithelium, or cilia and microvilli. Smooth muscle is going in a circular fashion around it, so that would be cut in transverse section, like we saw with our longitudinal blood vessels in the arterial we diagrammed. Now let's add that alveolar air sac. But then we pick up simple cuboidal epithelium again. So we didn't lose it. Okay, we just had a alveolus expanding out of our bronchial. And here's another one. So as soon as we see that first alveolus appearing, we now change from a bronchial to a respiratory bronchial. All right? So draw a dotted line across here. And this is now a respiratory bronchial. Just like I identified that as. Proximal to that for a short distance defined by specific measurements that we don't need to worry about. Just proximal to it, it's a terminal bronchial. But if all you saw was this, you wouldn't have any idea that it was a terminal bronchial. So you would just identify it as a bronchial. Okay? You have to see the presence of the respiratory bronchial to be able to identify the terminal bronchial. Okay? And it's a bronchial because it still has simple cuboidal epithelia and it still has smooth muscle. Now once we lose that, we tend to see long channels, and I should have moved this up a little bit. Um, but we tend to have long, so now we get into just simple squamous epithelium. And we see these wide airways that have no smooth muscle, no simple cuboidal epithelia. And this is now known as an alveolar duct. Like walking down a really wide hallway that has wide doorways and small rooms off of those. And the wide hallway would be the alveolar duct. And the wide doorways with the small rooms would be, just like this one, an alveolus. Small openings, known as pores, would lead into other small rooms. And that's how air flows from alveolus to alveolus. Okay. Well, let's look at some examples. So here would be just a regular bronchial. Simple cuboidal epithelium and muscle creating this thick wall. Here's a branch, and here we see our first alveolus. More smooth muscle, more alveoli with smooth muscle there. So this now becomes our respiratory bronchial, and this would be the terminal bronchial. Okay? Here's an alveolar duct. Here's an alveolar duct, individual alveoli. Let me show you another image. Right. Thick wall. But here's an alveolus, okay? So 
that, let me move this slide down. You can see just a small part of a, I moved it up to show the alveolar duct, so it's a little bit better. All right, so here we have just a small portion of a terminal bronchial. And then we see our first alveolus right here. So this point on, here's another alveolus. There's a couple more. This would be the smooth muscle. So all of this now is respiratory bronchial. All right. We get down here, we actually lose the smooth muscle. So now down here, and that's what I moved the slide up for. But here's another one. This would be an alveolar duct. You can see it has these smaller alveoli coming off of it. Let me move that up a little bit and you can see the alveolar duct. Okay, so smooth muscle still present, but then we get down here and we have an alveolar duct. So respiratory bronchial, alveolar duct, and then individual alveoli are the components of the respiratory zone because that's where we actually have a simple squamous epithelium that provides for gas exchange. So let's stop there um, and take a break. And when we come back, we'll pick up the structure of an alveolus and the components of a lung. And that's where we'll stop for next today. Okay? So why don't you take a break until 10 up? Um, I've got your lab exams, the lecture exams graded, so I'll give those to you at the end of the second lecture component, which will be shorter than this one. Everything should be up on D2L except your last two labs, which I handed back. I still have a couple that were turned in late that I need to grade, and then I'll put everything um, up on D2L. But I put up the quizzes um, that, that were graded that you got last week from the exam, which I'll be up there. Thank you. Thank you. I have them in my grade books. Oh. I have an Excel spreadsheet that I use. I just haven't put it up and posted it on YouTube. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. 